Hello, my name is Ryan. I'm with Summit Hydraulics and I'm back again with another third function install. Today is going to be on a Kubota L4701. This machine was loaned to us by our good friends over at Southwest Tracker and Equipment. Uh, if you need any tractors, trailers, implements, anything of the sort, please take a look at them. Uh, there's a link in the bio below. Uh, without further ado, let's get started. So with this third function installation, uh, we're going to be putting on this 4701 today. Uh, it, third function kit is a very good kit, uh, something that could be added onto your machine for a grapple or a snow plow or a blade or really any kind of implement that you want to use uh, with your machine in addition to it. Uh, the third function valve gets added on, you run a couple hoses, uh, you connect those hoses to either the grapple the blade or the plow, and then you can operate, uh, you know, whichever implement with a two button momentary joystick that we supply in our kit as well. All right, the first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna open up this box. We're gonna go through our inventory, our parts list, and check and make sure that we have everything that is supposed to be supplied in the kit. That way we can have a smooth install. All right, so what we've got to do here to install our valve mounting bracket is we have to remove these two bolts on the control valve for the loader. So we'll go ahead and get this loosened up. Uh, this has to come off. The bracket slides underneath uh, this, this L-shaped bracket here that the, the loader valve is used to mount to the frame of the machine with. And then we use this existing hardware. We're, we're going to reuse this to fasten everything back together. So. I'm going to start with our 17 millimeter wrenches and socket. Remove both of these. And now we can go ahead and install our valve mounting bracket. All right, now we got our bracket installed for the valve. Uh, we're gonna just need to snug up the nuts and the hardware here. Uh, but uh, the bracket slides underneath the L-shaped bracket that's used to fasten the loader valve. And then it just sits flush right up against this orange uh, part of the frame here. So we'll go ahead and snug that up. So here we have uh, the bracket after it's been snugged up. Um, I did forget to mention that we went ahead and removed the loader before we started doing this. I did, I did see that it was pretty tight area in there and I thought we would have some more room to be able to get in there and work as long as we had the loader off. So removing the loader definitely opened it up and gave you a lot more space, which made it a ton easier to access the, the hardware. And it's also gonna help when we install the pressure and the return line uh, to be able to access this with a wrench too. So definitely remove the loader um, prior to starting your install. It will certainly help you um, make it an easier, an easier install for you. So just wanted to address that. All right, 
Now we're gonna go ahead and mount the valves to the bracket and get these bolts started here. Now we can move to the front, install our front coupler bracket, and then run the hoses. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove this bolt and this bolt on the back side. And this is where we're going to fasten our front quick coupler bracket. We will reuse this hardware to install the bracket and fasten it back to the torsion bar. So we're gonna use the hardware that was supplied in the kit to refasten the bracket back to the torsion bar here. Uh, it did come with a longer bolt for the backside to be able to access uh, the second hole inside the torsion bar here. So that is a 14 millimeter on that side. Just go ahead and snug this up. And now we can start running our hoses. So here you can see the opposite end of that hose. Um, it's conveniently marked green. Um, so we'll remove this side, um, the green hose here. We will come off of the port that's open and then we will run our hose to the P port on the summit valve. So this kit works two different ways. Um, if you have factory rear remotes, you will tie in on the orange hose. Um, if you do not have factory rear remotes, as we do with this machine that we're working on now, you tie in on the hose that's marked green. So depending on how your machine is, if you have rear remotes, you're gonna remove the, the hose that's marked orange and tie in there. If you do not have rear remotes, you're gonna tie in like we are here with the hose that's marked green. So here we are taking a look at this loader valve on uh, this side that is marked green is where we're gonna tie in the third function valve from. So we will take this hose off here, um, install the hose that comes with the kit attached to this port on the loader valve, and we will run that to the T port on the summit valve. All right. Now we connect the other end of that hose right to the T-port on the summit valve. And again, like the previous videos we've mentioned, you don't have to go too far with these JIC fittings. Maybe just hand tighten and then about a quarter turn or maybe a half turn with a wrench and that will be pressure tight. Now we can move on to our work lines and run those up the loader and terminate on the crossbar uh, quick coupler bracket that we had already installed previously. All right, we'll attach our hose that has the red dust cap protector on it to that side. Our other work line hose with the black protector on this side. We color coat these so the lines don't get mixed up when you're removing or reattaching the loader. That way you know which line goes where with these color-coded quick connect dust plugs and dust caps. Now we'll move to the front and attach the opposing side of each hose to the quick coupler bracket. And at that point, it will be ready to start the wiring process. All right, there again, we're gonna keep everything color-coded so the hose that had the red connector on the hydraulic uh, third function valve, the red side will connect to the red side on your, your uh, front coupler bracket. So keep everything color coded. That way we don't risk switching the hoses up. All right, as you can see, I've just kind of zip tied these hoses together in some places, 
and zip tied them to some of the other lines that are running up to the loader to control the loader. Just kind of follow the side of the frame. I mean, there's no real set way to do this. However, you're really comfortable with, with uh, routing the hoses, but uh, there's plenty of room to route them however you're comfortable doing it. I just kind of went up against uh, the curl and the tilt hoses that run to the curl and the tilt cylinder. So, uh, like I said, you know, however you're comfortable doing it, doing it, it's not a real critical thing, just as long as it's kind of out of the way uh, and it's not in danger of getting pinched or anything like that. But uh, there's a good look of how we have it routed uh, and I think that'll do just fine. Next thing we're gonna do is remove this rubber handle and then we will install the two button joystick onto this lever. So take this off. And then our joystick has a series of sleeves inside. For this instance, we'll just remove one of those sleeves. Joystick goes on. And then of course you have four set screws that will fasten this lever or this joystick to the lever. Go ahead and tighten these down. Snap the wiring harness together. Now our Deutsch connectors go into each side of the solenoids. And we can continue to route the wire underneath the tracker tractor towards the front of the machine and connect it to the battery. All right, you can see what we've done here as we've connected the wiring to the battery here. I did find that removing the two screws for the air filter and just kind of moving this out of the way to prop it up, give you a lot more room. So I would certainly recommend removing those two screws and just kind of pushing that air filter towards the top of the radiator and resting it there when you're doing this wiring. It makes it so much easier. Uh, then as far as routing goes, it's kind of up to you, similar to the hoses. Uh, however you're comfortable, I came out down and around. There is a, this bar right here. I came back behind this bar and then just kind of went up through the engine compartment all the way to the front. And then uh, I wired, I ran the wiring through the rubber boot on the joystick for the loader valve, which we will show you. We will show you some uh, footage of that as well. All right, you can see here how we just routed this, this wire down through this rubber boot. Um, there was some extra wire. They make these harnesses a little bit longer, um, just in case, depending on how you want to route it. But uh, I did take a couple, uh, maybe a foot or so of extra wire, and I bundled that up and I zip tied that up underneath the loader valve, which uh, we'll show you a shot of that as well. Okay, you can kind of see what I've done here is like I said, I just kind of bundled this up and put a couple zip ties on it. Maybe tough to see from where we're looking at it, but there was a hole in this plate for the loader valve and I was able to feed a zip tie through that hole and come around and fasten that right up against that plate there. Um, and then you'll notice the wiring that runs to the battery here. I've kind of ran this down back behind this filter here and just up against the motor. There's some other wires that are loomed here and hoses and such. I just kind of followed those all the ways to the front of the machine and kept it tucked up in there. I know it's probably hard to see there, but you know, like I said, it's, it's kind of how you're comfortable doing it. This is, this is how I saw might be the best routing for it. But if you're not comfortable doing it this way, you can do it however you like. Uh, but that is how we that's how I ran the wiring up to the front. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. You know, if you have any uh, concerns or questions, please give us a call or give us an email. Uh, you can live chat with us on our website and speak to any of our customer service reps. Um, thank you again for uh, watching us and uh, you know, please, please subscribe to our channel and we'll see you next time.